This is Duke University. My contribution to this interdisciplinary dialogue is to explore the history of a concept, and that concept is modularity. Modularity is a concept that describes a particular type of system. A modular system consists of smaller parts, called modules, that fit together within a defined system architecture. Modules can fit into the system architecture in a plug-and-play manner by virtue of standardized interfaces. Not only do standard interfaces ensure interoperability with a greater system architecture, they also mask the messy internal details of individual modules. Modularity in a general sense is thus a strategy of control. It is a means for confronting and managing complexity in all types of systems, both natural and human built. So my objective today is to show how this concept is not a timeless or static or natural category. Instead, its meaning has changed and continues to change as professionals in various disciplines apply it and apply it to their respective fields of endeavor. In other words, modularity has an, or, excuse me, an interdisciplinary history. My current project, the project that I've been working on this year uh, as a fellow in the FHI, and I haven't actually finished the first book yet, I'm sort of hiding from it this year, um, is to construct and write this, interdis this interdisciplinary history, uh, and I'll return to it once I've finished the first book. This talk, then, is my first attempt to synthesize what I've learned, and once I've had my say, I look forward to hearing what you think about this topic. So let me talk a little bit about how I encountered uh, this word and became a little bit obsessed by it. I started thinking about this history when I was writing my dissertation, where I explored the evolution of, com of communication networks in the long 20th century from 1880 to 2000. And I looked at AT&T's creation of a national monopoly telephone network, the creation of computer networks such as the Internet and World Wide Web, in European and American efforts to build digital cellular networks. My interest was to get a better sense for who built these networks, how they built political, economic, and technological alliances in order to get the networks up and running, and how they dealt with rivals. The answer to all of these questions lied in the realm of standards. And so my approach was to look at the creation of standards and to look at network architectures, since these features had embedded in them the social and ideological values of their makers. So the latter networks in my study, the internet, the web, and the digital cellular telephone networks, bear more than a passing resemblance to the terms featured in Hughes's postmodern column, although certainly there were modern elements as well. Standardization, for example, he characterizes just as modern. So as I looked at standardization, it turned out that scholars in a wide variety of disciplines, sociology, law, engineering, history, political science, to name only a few, had written about standards and standardization, but the bulk of academic analysis came from economists and scholars in business schools who teach courses like uh, strategy and management, things like that. In this literature, the language of modularity was everywhere, from computer programming languages in which codes, chunks of code are reused uh, to accomplish routine tasks, uh, to computer networks themselves, which include uh, the central processing unit as well as peripherals such as uh, mice, keyboards, printers, monitors, um, and the entire industry structure of the computer industry, also they refer to as modular. And so as I read these descriptions, I had a distinct feeling that comes when one encounters a buzzword, an empty slogan, something that you encounter in an airport bookstore. And I was impressed that the concept was doing so much work for these authors. They had so much invested in it, and more to the point, they were using it to explain the very questions of control and power that interested me. Modularity, then, was not only a concept that could describe the design of existing systems. For these scholars, it emerged as a concept that their students and their executives needed to learn and harness. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.